The late, great Laura Nero. She died way too young. She was brilliant. So many people recorded her songs. And guitar great, Elliot Randall looks back. Uh, I, I, I was, I don't know if you know Joel Diamond. Uh, which, which one? The producer? The, or, well, or the, the, the he, he, no, he's not a keyboard player. I, I guess he's a producer. Uh, he was involved in the background on awful lot music publishing and uh, the and, silver Fox. That one. Is, is yeah. that what, is that what they call him? Yeah. Anyway, uh, interesting cat. Um, uh, I had a long interview with him and he, we were talking about, uh, Laura Nero and, um, I, I know I said, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I said, she just struck me as, uh, and I'm not, I, I don't do a lot of dirt unless it's there. If it's there, I have to ask a pink elephant question. Like, you mm-hmm. know, like, like mm-hmm. Lou Graham and Mick Jones. I had to ask that, but sure. um, well, I, I, I asked Joel, I said, so she just seemed eccentric to me. I said, you know, I'd see her in interviews and I'm, I'm going uh, just, I like unapologetic people uh, for interviews. They're great for interviews because they're colorful. Mm-hmm. You went to school with her. Uh, what was, uh, from your standpoint, what was she like? And you, I know well, you recorded with her. She was a great character. She was a very loving character. Uh, eccentric, yes. Um, she believed in the music that she wrote. And happily, it was. It didn't take too long before she was discovered. And um, I'm not really sure how she felt about having most of her tunes covered by other acts and they were the ones who had the success on it. But, you know, when Laura did, did a song, she could make you cry. She could make you laugh. She was just yeah. a most wonderful woman. And uh, Jane and I always refer to her as Mama Earth. Because she is. You know, she, she was. I mean, she was just this wonderful person. Well, you recorded her last album. I mean, mm. they, they posthumously released another one after that. But uh, the last album, while she was alive, what was the vibe going into, into that with her? Well, it was interesting. Um, Gary Katz was producing. Mm -hmm. And one thing about Gary is he has this incredible knack, this incredible talent for surrounding himself with all of the right people for the job. And he did. He did. It was great. I mean, uh, as I recall, Jerry Jamat was playing bass. Um, I think Paul Griffin was playing keyboards as well. Uh, It was was just an incredible experience. And was she was delighted. She she was really, you know, she had so much fun participating in and listening to how we responded musically to what she was doing. Was what was fun. the last time you'd seen her before uh, before you, you went to that session? God, years and years before. I think we bent, bumped into each other at the bottom line. But um, our friendship sort of took the back burner after we left high school. And I just sort of followed her career and, you know, we'd be on the same bill together sometimes and say hello, but that was about it. And then, and then when we did her album, it all came back. It felt like it was back in high school. That's cool. <laughs> jo- I, jo- she, did, she did one tune about elephants and I think Lou Marini was in the room and I'm playing a solo and stuff. And I stopped and, uh, and Lou turns to me and he says, Elliot, Elephants are not blue. I was playing the blues. <laughs> so it was one of those, you know, great silly moments. Yeah, yeah. I've looked at a lot of celebrity. I'm fascinated by, because in, in, in radio, we're like the, we're known as the bottom feeders of entertainment. If I go up on stage in front of 20,000 people, which I've done, and are, am I introducing a band as the radio guy? I can see like 20,000 people saying, Get the hell off the stage, radio guy. We want to see the band. But, but I'm fascinated by, by, by how people react to fame because the, the, the cliche thing people say is uh, you become a celebrity and emotionally you could possibly stop growing emotionally. You just do for some people because it affects people. I mean, speaking of ego, it affects people in really derogatory ways. Meanwhile, they think they're on the ride of their lives. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I've been there personally. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've um, taken a few more drinks than I should have. I've taken a few more drugs than I should have. Thankfully I've survived. Um, I married a wonderful woman, English woman who. That's why you're there. That's why you're there. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm here. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll tell you about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, She's basically saying, look, if you lead a really healthy life, 
You'll be around a lot longer and you'll enjoy it. I believed her and I pretty much stopped everything. I've got a few nasty little habits, but they're very, very minor. And, um, you know, it, it, it's about being able to perceive the world around you in a, in a conscious sense. You know, what's going on? How can I make this world a slightly better place? And obviously with music and the various arts, one of those goals is to, and people will say it's, it's about vibes. Yeah, it's about vibes, but it's also about, you know, setting a standard by which other people can take an example. So you're more mindful now. You're just more mindful. You're just, yeah. oh yeah. More present as the cliche would go, but these they're cliches because they're true. Uh, uh, um, and that's something that some people never, you know, to be in your body, to like be there. Cause you know, that thing when we're 20, we're like jumping. It's like we've had 20 cups of coffee. And we've not had none, even before the drugs or alcohol. There's that yeah. thing that happens when you're young, when you're in your body, that you're not quite in it. Maybe it's a thing of age where by default, we we're forced to be in it when it's a little more sore. But there's that's, again, quality of life. I mean, as you can tell, I talk about this stuff a lot with artists. Yeah. It's just, that's just my thing. I'm not a techie guy. So mm. even though I will ask you some of those questions, but so how did you stop doing these little habits? Because that's that'd be the I find the audience is really interested in when they go on a journey with someone they're, they're, they're you know, all the, the information about, you know, we'll get through that stuff, but about you as a human guy, like a guy stopping that and making a conscious decision to say, like you said, I want to be here longer. I want to be more present. Okay. So a good example of that would be, um, let's discuss a really forbidden substance, coke, right? Obviously, as a, as a young rock musician, it was all over the place. And I, like most of my peers, went, oh, I'll give this a try, you know. Um, the thrill wore off. Now, there's a great old saying, which is, you know, you try it the first time and it's never the same afterwards. And it's true. Um, but, you know, one of the real wake-up calls was when my friend John Belushi passed away. And... I know why, you know, I, there's some other people who names I won't even mention who have had the same problem and you can die. You, you, you're gone. Okay. You're, you know, you've made some great music. You're a legend, blah, 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 but you're not around to enjoy it for what could have been the rest of your life. So with Jane, it was very easy. My wife, she said um, about this good stuff, Elliot, you must promise me that you will never ever do it again. And I promised that I would never do it again, faithfully. And I didn't. It wasn't that hard to say, you know, to, to say, right, I won't. Because it, but as I said, by that point, the thrill had worn off. So, so that's interesting because, uh, let me interrupt you, because there's that mm. thing, coming from a long line of alcoholics, there's that mm. thing where I've heard uncles and people say, oh, yeah, when I say that word, oh, no, I won't. There's a little, there's a little thing in their head saying, "Well, I'm going to try," or something like that. So by that time, you had, you were, you were, you were there. I was done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was also done with alcohol because, um, not because I drank too much. I mean, although I probably did in comparison to some other people, um, but I wound up getting really, really sick. I was doing one of my stranger gigs. I was doing front of house sound or a band in Ecuador. And um, something happened where I, I was walking out of the hotel in a rage. I'm wearing sunglasses and the sun, I couldn't see the door. So the sunglasses and the, you know, my face right into the door. I wound up cutting my eyebrow and uh, they took me to a local hospital, which in Quito, Ecuador, <laughs> you know, mm, um, they sewed me up. And when I came back to the States a couple of, uh, couple of weeks later, I went to see my GP. When he looked at me, he said, Elliot, I think you've got hepatitis. I, I was orange, man. I was, you know. Um, and um, so he sent me to New York's best hepatologist who said, yeah, you've got something. It's not A or B, but you, your liver is definitely messed up. 
make a long story short, I couldn't even smell alcohol without wanting to puke. Wow. So, you know, I got saved. I mean, it was, it was, it wasn't one of those, you know, AA with all respect, it wasn't one, one of those convenings, but I was like, right, I got to stop. Uh, good for you. Mm. Good for so you. now the music gets me high. The music gets, gets me really, really high. And Imagine my, that. Yeah. And also, I mean, given the state of the world today where it's not like people congregate the way they used to, and I'm still being very, very careful about COVID. Uh, I'm asthmatic, and I sure as hell don't want anything to happen to me. So I've had my wife has an autoimmune. Uh, my wife, sorry, my wife has an mm. autoimmune disease. My 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 daughter, by default, she's 24. She's autistic. Takes anti seizure medication, so she's immune compromised. Mm. I'm one of those few people who goes into like Costco or something and wears a mask. And yeah, yeah, we do that too. We we still wear masks virtually everywhere. Um, I have a dear friend I've not seen in years, a guy that I literally, we got to know each other in junior high school. And we've kept in touch all of these years. He's a trumpet player. We went to music and art high school together after that. And he and his wife and two other people are coming over Friday. Um, so what we've done is we've made arrangements to be able to sit in a nice outdoor cafe and keep things as safe as possible. It just makes sense to me. We'll have more from Elliot Randall in a couple of days. Remember, he was a session guitarist for Steely Dan, Frankie Valli, Paul Lanka, two of the KISS members' solo albums, Gene Simmons, Peter Chris. He worked with the Village People, Richie Havens, Peter Frampton, Yoko Ono, Carly Simon, Carl Wilson, Laura Nero, Kirsty McCall, and many others. Remember, if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description. You can make a donation at PayPal, join our Patreon, or buy a t-shirt. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.